In today's world, anyone, whether he or she is America's president or a homeless person, a first grader, or a PhD student, can easily give an accurate answer to the question of what Coca-Cola is. It is hard to find a person who would not be familiar with this logo, rounded white letters on a red background, folded into words truly sacred to most Americans, Coca-Cola. It is one of the most successful and recognizable brands, experts estimated at more than $70 billion. And few people would think that the first year of the carbonated drink's existence was, unprofitable for its creators. At first the drink was bought daily by an average of only nine people. The sales revenue during the first year was only $50. Interestingly, it cost $70 to produce Coca-Cola, which means that in the first year the drink was unprofitable. But gradually the popularity of Coca-Cola grew, and so did the profits from its sale. The story of this incredibly successful business, even by American standards, began, as is often the case, with a trifle. With a homemade recipe written by an amateur chemist and part owner of a small pharmaceutical company, John Stitt Pemberton in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, May 8, 1886. A former Army cavalryman, Captain Pemberton found himself out of business after the Confederate defeat and had to twist and turn to make ends meet. Having moved from his native Columbus to Atlanta, he opened a pharmaceutical company, as from a young age he was fond of chemical experiments. After making the syrup, he called his friend and part-time accountant Frank M. Robinson and shared his discovery with him. Frank advised him to write down this wonderful recipe. The syrup was sweet and thick. John took it to Jacob's Pharmacy, the largest pharmacy in town. That same day the first portions of the syrup, at five cents a glass, were sold to customers. The basic ingredients of Coca-Cola were as follows, three parts coca leaves, the same leaves were used to make the drug cocaine, to one part tropical cola tree nuts. The resulting drink was patented as a remedy for any nervous disorder and began to be sold through a vending machine at Jacobs, the city's largest drugstore in Atlanta. Pemberton also claimed that Coca-Cola cured impotence, and that those addicted to morphine could switch to it, Pemberton himself was partial to morphine, by the way. It should be noted that cocaine was not a forbidden substance at that time, and nothing was known about its harm to health, for example, in the story The Sign of Four by Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes injects himself with cocaine in moments of inactivity, so painfully endured by him. So cocaine was freely available, and it was often added to drinks to replace alcohol for pleasure and tone, Coca-Cola was not an innovation in this. The name for the new drink was invented by Pemberton's accountant Frank Robinson, who, also skilled in calligraphy, wrote the words Coca-Cola in beautiful curly letters that still serve as the drink's logo today. The original name and lettering are registered as trademarks with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, and only the Coca-Cola company has the right to use them. We must admit that there have been many attempts on the elements of the corporate style on the part of competitors. Coke sued infringers with great pleasure, destroying hapless competitors one by one. There have been lawsuits for the use of the corporate color, red is patented as such, a similar font, and even the color of the drink itself. After the very first tentative steps, Coca-Cola continued its development. By the end of 1886, Coca-Cola had become fizzy. The story goes that a certain hungover southerner stopped by Jacob's Pharmacy, which sold Coca-Cola, and ordered a glass of the drink. The clerk, Willie Venable, was too lazy to go to the other end of the hall to the waterworks and asked the customer if he wouldn't mind having a little soda with the Pemberton syrup. He agreed, and once he drank it, he was so delighted that soon all Atlanta drugstores were serving Coca-Cola only in combination with soda. In 1886, prohibition was enacted in Atlanta. People switched to Coca-Cola, and things began to turn around. But the inventor of the miracle recipe's health deteriorated, besides he did not have the necessary capital to further expand the business. And Pemberton sold the cherished formula and all the necessary equipment to various partners, in particular, two-thirds of his company to the very venable, the discoverer of the fizzy Coca-Cola variant. 
An inventory compiled by Pemberton by the time the business was resold gives us the key to the carefully classified Coca-Cola recipe, lemon oil, lime oil, nutmeg oil, nutmeg extract, coca leaf extract, vanillin, citrus acid, orange elixir, narrowly oil, from orange tree flowers, and caffeine. In all, the author received $2,000 for his invention. He died in poverty on August 16, 1888 and was buried in a cemetery for the poor. Only 70 years later a stone tombstone was erected for the founder of Coca-Cola. A short time later a poor immigrant from Ireland, Asa G. Candler, showed up in Atlanta. He had only $1.75 in his pockets, but he firmly believed that he would be lucky in his new place. With a remarkable commercial talent, he soon earned a small fortune and purchased the recipe for Coca-Cola from Pemberton's widow for $2,300 American dollars, a lot of money at the time. Together with his brother and two other companions, he founded the Coca-Cola Company in Georgia with an initial capital of $100,000. And while Pemberton was the father of the drink, Asa Kendler became the father of the Coca-Cola Company, registering it on January 31, 1893. In the same year, the first dividends were paid on the company's shares, $20 per share. Every year since then, the company has paid its shareholders dividends without fail. Candler was a Christian and a teetotaler. He believed that Coca-Cola was the perfect soft drink and the cure-all. As if anticipating a boom a hundred years later, Candler and Frank Robinson began developing a new recipe based on Pemberton's original, to improve the taste and shelf life of the drink while maintaining its invigorating effects on the body. And a few years later, when the anti-cocaine campaign was at its height, Coca-Cola switched to a new formulation using coca leaves, from which cocaine had already been extracted. Coca-Cola's authorized capital in 1892 was $100,000. Coca-Cola owed much to the ingenuity of its president, who never tired of coming up with, in modern terms, effective marketing moves. For example, Candler offered to supply two gallons of syrup, equivalent to 256 standard servings of the beverage, free of charge for promotional purposes, in exchange for 128 names and addresses of its regular customers. Then each of them was sent a coupon to buy one free cup of Coca-Cola at said pharmacy. The calculation was simple and straightforward, the customers, having tasted the new drink, would order another cup, so the pharmacist would instantly take out the entire batch. After which he would certainly order more. In addition, Candler actively traded watches, calendars and souvenirs with the Coca-Cola trademark. Today it is all the basics of advertising, but a century ago such things were new, and with their help they could work wonders. Business was booming. And in 1916 the original Coca-Cola bottle appeared, now unmistakably distinguished by consumers from the competition. The father of this original, waist-height bottle is Benjamin Thomas, who bought the rights to sell bottled Coca-Cola from its creators. In an effort to boost his profits, he sought a non-trivial form that would not be associated with any other product but his own. So that it could be identified in the dark, to the touch, in a broken form, so that you could tell by the shards that it contained Coca-Cola. And he succeeded. And the idea came from, the fashion of the time. In 1914, women wore goadlet skirts with an overlap below the waist. These proportions were chosen for the original bottles. And it should be noted, sales immediately crept steadily upward, not to mention the fact that Coca-Cola became even more recognizable by literally a few features. The change in the shape of the bottle also helped improve the effectiveness of Coca-Cola's advertising campaigns, as well as strengthening the brand's image. The bottle is handed to Santa Claus, who is now a frequent guest on Christmas advertisements for this soda water. The cohesion of the image is so strong that many Americans are still convinced that the image of Santa himself was invented by Coke. After all, he is dressed in a suit with corporate colors and constantly carries the famous container with the waist. By the way, the very first time Coca-Cola was sold in a rectangular and colorless bottle in 1894. The store owner in Vicksburg, Mississippi, thinking over how to reliably transport the soda to a distant plantation, which was then sold only on tap, 
had the foresight to buy the necessary equipment and began bottling the drink. There is a legend in the company itself that one day an acquaintance of his came to Candler promising to tell the owner the secret of a rapid increase in the firm's profits. Candler paid him a lot of money for the secret. Upon receiving the check, the man leaned over and whispered in Candler's ear, bottle the drink. Candler did not follow the advice because the bottles sometimes exploded, and that led to lawsuits. Nevertheless, in 1899 the first bottled Coca-Cola plant was built in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and by the early 1920s the number of such plants had passed the thousand mark. By the way, there are so many little things associated with Coca-Cola in our lives that sometimes we don't even think about it anymore. In 1933, the first Coca-Cola vending machines appeared. The stores began to offer six packs, six bottle packs, that successfully survived into the new millennium. At the same time, the Coca-Cola company mastered another innovation, the remote refrigerators, which were installed in any store. Where the visitor himself could pick up a chilled bottle of his favorite drink. Thus, the last barrier between the consumer and the final product, the counter disappeared. Two things are needed to grow a business, a good product and good advertising. Asa Kendler launched the first advertising campaign in the history of Coca-Cola with the slogan, drink Coca-Cola. Delicious and refreshing. The Coca-Cola company began by creating a sales department. Asa recruited young, energetic, drummers, as the sales staff was called in America. And since good advertising is not limited to a logo and a slogan, even if a very successful one, Asa Kendler also used new forms of advertising for that time. He began mailing coupons for a free portion of Coca-Cola, as well as various souvenirs with an image of the Coca-Cola trademark. Coca-Cola, a new non-alcoholic soft drink, was becoming increasingly popular. Many of those who first tasted Coca-Cola in a store or restaurant also took it home. Soon, almost everyone considered it their duty to try the trendy drink that was so enthusiastically drunk by everyone around them. The production of souvenir products advertising the Coca-Cola trademark brought the company unheard of success. The easily recognized trademark entered everyday life and began its triumphal march around the world. Readers found the Coca-Cola logo on the covers of fashion magazines and on huge posters along the roads. Coca-Cola's advertisements always had bright and noticeable images that were to the liking of every American. The drink was advertised by the most famous artists and athletes. The high quality of the drink and the beautiful advertising brought Coca-Cola unprecedented success. In 1931 there was another momentous event in the history of Coca-Cola. The company commissioned American artist Haddon Sundblom to design a red and white suit for Santa Claus. Before that, Santa Claus dressed up as he had to, in a variety of colors and shades, which did not look very funny. The artist thought for a long time which face to draw Santa Claus and, made his self-portrait. That's how, for many years now on Christmas Day, the kind and cheerful Santa Haddon has been looking at us. In 1939, PepsiCo began selling the drink in larger capacity bottles at competitors' product prices. All of Pepsi's advertising was based on comparing prices and bottle sizes. The sales of Pepsi began to grow rapidly. That's when Coca-Cola decided to take a serious crack at the competitor. A lawsuit was filed claiming infringement of the trademark use of the word, cola, in the name of the drink. A long and scandalous lawsuit ended with an amicable settlement. This was the beginning of a real, cold war, between the companies. Before World War II, Coca-Cola was already sold in 44 countries. The U.S. entry into the war was accompanied by an order from Robert Woodruff to his army. I want every man in uniform to be able to get a bottle of Coca-Cola for five cents. Wherever he is and no matter how much it will cost the company. More than five million bottles of Coca-Cola were delivered to the military during the war. In August 1958, Fanta debuted in Boston. Three years later, on February 1, 1961, production of Sprite was launched. In 1960, the company began bottling its drinks in tin cans, previously reserved for the army. And since 1977, in plastic PET, polyethylene terephthalate, 
bottles with a capacity of 2 liters. In 1979, Roberto Gazueta, one of the most successful managers of the XX century, took over the company. In 1982, Diet Coke appeared, which used a sugar substitute instead of sugar. One can contains only one calorie. Of course, the Americans could not do without their favorite Coca-Cola also in space. So in 1985, Coca-Cola made its way to the stars. It was not an ordinary can, but a special one with a straw. Today, the global Coca-Cola empire looks as follows. 11 large multi-country bottler companies and several dozen individual unconsolidated bottler businesses. For example, Coca-Cola Enterprises Incorporated operates in the United States, where it produces about 70% of the beverages consumed by Americans, and in a number of Western European countries. In 1996, the company purchased $1.6 billion worth of concentrates. Another major bottler Coca-Cola Amital Limited has similar positions in Asia-Pacific. The Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company operates in Eastern Europe. At the moment there are about 200 types of drinks produced by Coca-Cola. But three of them account for 80% of its total global sales, Coca-Cola, Fanta and Sprite. There are about 70 varieties of Fanta with various flavors, orange, lemon, tangerine, grapefruit, kiwi, melon, watermelon, and so on. There are eight varieties of Coca-Cola. The Coca-Cola company tries to satisfy the tastes of all consumers, it also produces high-calorie drinks enriched with minerals. The Coca-Cola company also produces natural juices. Nestia iced tea and Nescafe iced coffee are co-produced with Nestle. In the summer of 1999, Coca-Cola acquired all rights to the Schweppes trademark, previously owned by Cadbury. Interesting facts about Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is good at removing rust, dye residue remains. This effect is achieved due to the content of orthophosphoric acid in Coca-Cola. Coke is also known to remove lime scale in the kettle and plaque in the toilet bowl. However, it is not recommended to use it for this purpose, as there are specialized products containing acid for this purpose. Coca-Cola is used to wash away blood stains. American police officers keep several gallons of Coke in their squad cars to wash away blood stains from the asphalt at the scene of an accident. If all the Coca-Cola produced were bottled and distributed to everyone on the planet, each of us would receive 767 bottles. If the entire produced Coca-Cola were filled into a pool 180 centimeters deep, it would be 33 kilometers long and almost 15 kilometers wide. 512 million people could enter such a pool at the same time. Every second, 8,000 glasses of the company's beverages are consumed worldwide. The huge Coca-Cola sign above the Coca-Cola World Pavilion in Atlanta consists of 1,407 ordinary light bulbs and 1,906 pogo neon lights. The sign is 9 meters high, 8 meters wide and weighs 12.5 tons. The biggest sign of Coca-Cola is in the Chilean town of Erica. It is set on a hilltop. It is 122 meters wide and 40 meters high. The sign is made of 70,000 bottles of Coca-Cola. The first outdoor billboard of Coca-Cola, drawn in 1904, is still located in its place in the town of Cartersville, Georgia. In 1989, Coca-Cola was the first foreign company to advertise its brand on Pushkin Square in Moscow. The longest Coca-Cola delivery route is in Australia. Truck drivers have to cover a 1,803-kilometer route to deliver the product from Perth, South Australia, to the communities of Karata and Port Hedland. Today, the Coca-Cola trademark is the most famous trademark in the world and the Coca-Cola company is the most famous company on Earth. The Coca-Cola trademark is known by 98% of all population of the world. Coca-Cola is sold in almost 200 countries of the world. Every day about 1 billion Coca-Cola products are sold around the world. That's it for today. If you found the video interesting don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.